Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So take a look at this chart and what you would notice is that after the year 1970, the income inequality in Western countries has been on an exponential rise. Now, 1970s is the same period that the world abandoned the gold standard. So between the period 1870 and 1970, the world existed on and off on the gold standard. But after 1970, the world abandoned gold standard and moved to something called as fake money. Now this fake money sitting in 2022 has created a bunch of fake problems. For example, the income inequality is highest ever levels. The debt on the world is at a record level. The power vested within the government is at an all time high. Now you might say that okay this is a natural progression that as the world progresses there will be more income inequality. Actually that is a very wrong thought process because you yourself would understand through this simple example that there is something deeply murky going on when Mr. Warren Buffett pays less taxes compared to his office employees. You tell me whether that is right or wrong. Now people do not bother talking about all these issues because they have better things to discuss on Twitter like Richa Chadda case and whatnot. So they are too busy devoting their time there and 99% people do not understand this viewpoint. Now since many people watch my content, here is a prognosis that I am doing that going forward in the world there will be more income inequality. In fact, my hypothesis is that people will mostly exist in two forms of buckets. The first category of people would be deeply rich, they will be ultra elite, not elite, ultra elite, so this is the first category. The second major category of people would struggle for everyday necessities. Now this is already happening to a certain extent and this is the reason why you keep on seeing that people are getting so dissatisfied with everything that is around them. Now it is completely your choice whether you acknowledge this reality or not. If you want to acknowledge the reality, I will break down this video into three simple components. One is that what exactly is fake money? Second key point, how is fake money making rich people richer and poor people poorer? Now third and finally, I will speak about some smart investors, how they are dealing with this fake money problem and are actually using the system to become richer. So this is going to be a complicated macroeconomic discussion. So please hear the entire argument thoroughly. Please do not jump to conclusion. And also my sincere and humble request that if you like this type of content, please subscribe to this channel. Please like this video. Please share this video. Now these type of videos videos need to reach out to more people because there is hardly anyone who is talking about this issue. And also, if you're looking to save taxes and optimize your tax returns, do go and speak with team at Tax Buddy. Your taxes are going to be your number one expense much bigger than the expenses that you will incur on your children or future children. So learn how to optimize taxes and do go and speak with the team at Tax Buddy. They can help you with tax optimization. The link is in the description box and you can use that link to avail a special discount. So let me break down this complex topic into simple understandable point and let us first and foremost understand that how money becomes invaluable over time. So in economics, there is something called a supply and demand graph. Now this is a basic economic concept that everyone should be aware of. Now basically what happens is that as you increase the money supply or if you print more amount of money, then what would happen? The value or inherent value associated with money will come down. Why would that happen? Because this supply curve will increase and it will shift towards right. So this intersection point depicts the inherent value of money. And as you can see that as this supply curve shifts rightwards, the value goes down. So this V2 is lesser than V1. So as the government prints more money or creates more money, the money or the value of the money that you're holding into your accounts, that will come down. So this is a fairly commonsensical point that if you are increasing the supply of literally anything in the world excessively, then the value of that commodity or that thing is going to go down quite aggressively. So this is really what the fake money problem is. So this brings us to point number two and a set of interesting questions. So the first question is that is there a limitation to the amount of money that governments can print? You tell me in the comment box, the short answer is no. They can print any amount of money that they can like. They have absolute authority in terms of the amount of money that can be printed in the economy. Now comes a related question that, okay, it is not like that because, you know, there are a lot of governments that go bankrupt. So government needs to be careful about how much money they are going to print, etc, etc. And there has to be some kind of a limit. Okay, so let me show you the debt chart here. And you tell me that what is a sensible level of a debt? This is a simple question that I'm asking you. There has to be something, right? I mean, for example, if I go and ask you that you as an individual, if you are having a salary of one lakh rupee, then what is the maximum sensible level of debt you should be having on yourself? You might put that number to be 50,000, 60,000, one lakh, two lakh. 
decide whatever that number is i'm not going to argue about that similarly there has to be some number in your mind about how much level of debt that can exist in the world read commentary by any economist read commentary by any investor read commentary by anyone call up your finance professor economics professor anyone ask them what is the maximum permissible limit in terms of taking debt should be on the world what is that sensible number is no one knows the answer so this is the second key important point so the third key question here is that if a government prints too much of the money then what happens okay so in some weaker economic cases for example zimbabwe venezuela then the economy itself goes bankrupt but if the economy is not going bankrupt does it mean that everything is fine or is it some way that the people are paying okay so for this understand this flow chart and aggregate all the three points that i have explained so far so point number 1 was that the government gets absolute power in terms of printing money they don't come to us and ask us that hey uh, we are looking to print this amount of money can we print they are not like huma qureshi from gangs of wasipur who comes and says that permission to leni chahiye na so this is the first key point now no one knows what a sensible level of debt is so government can take any amount of debt now how do they increase the debt by printing a lot of money so take a look at this chart and you will see that almost every single decade the debt to gdp ratio has been going higher higher and higher now you might be taking a look at this chart and would be wondering yaar government is taking debt but who is giving government all this debt so here is a very interesting conversation and let me explain this on the next point well to cut the long story short it is people like you and me who is giving government the debt now let me requalify that statement it is not as if that we are willingly giving government the debt it is just that government has infinite power without even us knowing that we are giving them debt so let me break down this mechanics by actually showing you how the money printing process works so take a look at this 100 rupee note and there is a sentence that this note is a promise of repayment so what is this 100 rupee note this 100 rupee note is a bond between the government and holder of this 100 rupee for example if i have this 100 rupee then i have given the government this 100 rupee as a debt so let me explain the mechanics as to how this 100 rupee is created so the government in order to run its operation requires a lot of money now they have two three ways of doing it the first option is that you go and tax people so this is the first key very obvious thing and over the years we have been seeing that the taxes are going higher higher and higher the second option is that it can do something called as bond operations now what exactly are bonds bonds is very simple the government comes and tells us here is a paper and it costs you let's say 100 rupees you take this from me you give me 100 rupees and after one year when the bond matures i am going to pay you 110 rupees so what is it that the government is doing the government is taking debt from you they are taking money in the form of loan from you and this is indicated as a public debt on this chart now the third way has a complex name associated with it it is called as monetization of debt the government itself can simply print money and give itself a debt so let me very quickly take you through this figure and explain how government actually give itself a debt so you would notice that government raises funds through taxes and issuing bonds this we have already covered central banks buy the bonds on the primary market so this is the central bank it buys the bond it keeps its bond here all the government bond and it prints a lot of money and give it to the government the government then goes out and give it to banks the banks further lend it out and they make money so this is how the entire operation works so let us further understand that point by picking a working example so let's say that the government requires 1 trillion dollar it has taxed everything that it could but it is not getting that tax money in form of 1 trillion dollar it has that additional requirement can it generate this 1 trillion dollar in the economy the answer is yes how will it do it it will simply go and ask central banks to buy its bonds and the central bank will print 1 trillion dollar and give it to the government and government will release this 1 trillion dollar in the economy now in this entire game the moment the government prints this 1 trillion dollar so let's say that you have 1 lakh rupee lying in your hdfc bank account now what happens to the value of this 1 lakh rupee that is lying into your account in case this 1 trillion dollar gets printed well again going back to that supply demand curve the value of this money goes down quite aggressively and this is where poor people are losing and the rich keeps on getting richer and the poor people keep on getting poorer so now you might have a very natural question that okay how is this entire thing legitimate because the government can print infinite amount of money they are not even taking my permission they keep on devaluing the savings that i have made again i get no say in it so how is this thing entirely legitimate and why is it that common people like us are 
are not doing anything about it. Well, it is very simple because a fake trust on currencies is built. So let me explain that in very simple dynamics. So think about it this way that in order to give legitimacy to this entire system of money printing, what needs to happen? That selling of bonds need to happen and you need to find buyers on the other end. Because if government can keep on issuing bonds and common people can keep on buying those bonds, then government can theoretically keep on raising the debt level forever. And this is something that is actually happening. Now, why is it happening? It is happening simply because of the fact that the government pushes you to invest in currency. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, so let me ask you a question there. Now, do you find it easier to do a fixed deposit in a bank? Or do you find it easier to go and buy real estate, gold, silver, etc.? Now, you might argue with me that I know a lot about real estate, gold, silver, this, that. So it is easier for me to buy it. But think about it from a general population level. Now, in terms of buying physical gold, there is a limit up to which you can buy that gold. Second key thing, in terms of buying real estate, there is an additional charge on that asset class. For example, it is called a stamp duty. So if if you are buying a 1 crore rupee house somewhere, then in some states you might have to pay 10% stamp duty on it. But if you are going and buying a bond, for example, doing a fixed deposit is like buying a bond. Are you paying 10% stamp duty on it? The answer is absolutely not. So therefore, what I'm simply telling you is, so take any asset class where you have to convert your 1 crore cash money into let's say real estate money or gold money or any form of money, you will have a harder time investing here. Why is it? Because the government does not want you to invest there. So the mechanics are very simple and I'm summarizing again that the government prints infinite amount of money. How do they do it? They do it by selling bonds. With every time they run the printer, they are devaluing the currency. But in order to maintain this game, they are pretty much cutting you out in terms of buying asset classes. Now, when I say government, I'm not speaking about the Indian government. A lot of people just take it on their ego that why did you do criticize our support? Supreme Leader Arvind Kejriwal or why did you criticize our Supreme Leader Narendra Modi ji or why did you criticize our Supreme Leader Rahul Gandhi? I don't bother about all this and neither am I speaking about the Indian government. I am talking about the governments in general. So please don't get offended. I am not offending your political ideology. So now you might have a natural question that okay, it's not like this. I get option to invest in the stock market. I can just open my Zeruda Grow Up Stocks account and I can invest very easily. So why are you saying that we are pushed to invest in the bond market? Okay, so the government controls even that lever by manipulating something called as the interest rate. Let me show you two scenarios there. So imagine a scenario where the base interest rates are 5%. So if the base interest rates are 5%, then you will be getting a 7% FD rate. Where will you put most of your money? So the government has pushed you by pushing out the interest rate and have picked your money into bonds. Second option is that if the interest rates are close to 1%, then are you going to put your money in bonds? The answer is no. You are not going to put your money in FD. Let's say that you are getting 2.5% fixed deposit rate. Why will you put it in fixed deposit? And invest where you are most likely going to invest in the stock market. So investors will flock towards the stock market. So now you might have a natural question that, okay, they, I have seen that the government cuts the interest rate to 0%, 1% also. Why do they do it? Because they are trying to accelerate the GDP. This is again a second matrix that government is very worried about. And they know for a fact that both these markets, they completely control. They can just press this interest rate lever and make you move your stock money into bond money and your bond money into stock money. It hardly makes a difference for them from a practicality viewpoint. I have been extremely bullish about stock market. Why? It is not as if that I trust the companies that they are doing some amazing work in the stock market. Now give me one sensible answer. Which large cap one company has gone up by 50% in terms of generating real value? Do you see 50% more Dower stores? Do you see TCS selling 50% more stuff than it used to do pre-pandemic? Or do you see HUL selling 50% more stuff than it was selling pre-pandemic? No, the stock market moves completely on money printing. So this brings us to the final point as to is there something that you can do in order to survive and deal with this fake money problem? So here are five key tips that I will give you. This is not exhaustive, but these are five things that you could consider doing at the start. Number one, please play the bond market stock market game. If you see the interest rate rising, go and invest in bonds. If you see the interest rate falling, go and invest in stocks. It's as simple as that. Second key thing, build an alternate asset portfolio. For example, real estate. Now, when I say real estate, I don't mean to say that you buy any flat anywhere in the world and it is a good real estate. No, you have to scout for individual asset sensibly. 
what is it that real estate investments or alternate investment assets allow you to do they just simply allow you to convert your fake money into a real asset for example a house or whatever that real asset you consider to be most of the things that are non cash are real assets according to me third option is that generate alpha in the stock market now what is the meaning of alpha alpha simply means if the index is generating 12% cagr you should generate 15% why think about it this way and i'll give you a small example these days there is a talk that inflation in india is 7% 8% who decides that number the government itself the constituent of the basket as to how inflation is created is decided by the government itself the real inflation rate is much higher how much higher i don't know so consider index as the benchmark that you should beat in order to protect your money so unless you are beating the index returns you are not actually getting wealthier in real terms if you are giving your money to mutual fund managers or pms service guys they charge 2% on the a um so let me help you walk through an example so let's say that you are investing 1 lakh rupee you are able to invest in the stock market on your own and you are able to generate let's say 10% return now let's do mota mota math how much money you have made you have made 1.1 lakh 10000 rupee profit now if you are giving your 1 lakh rupee to a pms guy or a mutual fund person they are charging 2% on the aum so they will take 2000 rupees irrespective of the market is going down or up on 1 lakh they will take 2000 you generate 10% return on it so hypothetically let's say that you get 108 now what is the difference between these two scenarios you are getting 2000 rupee less profit that is almost 20% the less profit that you are generating so unless you know how to generate wealth on your own you are not going to become rich the mutual fund managers or other people are going to become richer of you now comes the fourth point that please learn to optimize taxes everyone would be paying taxes we live in a world where jeff bezos warren buffett etc etc all the nami garami people are paying very less taxes so you must learn tax optimization strategies that are legal so this is the fourth point fifth and final point please learn how to take loans i will link one of my videos where i have explained this entire process now if you deem fit please go and watch that video it would allow you to at least understand the basics of taking a loan and please spend your time energy and effort learning new things and cultivating your brain set and learning about money and only then you will be able to do well in the fake money world thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon